Human history has no shortage of barbaric and torturous methods of execution, but perhaps one of the most disturbing is that of the gibbet. This chilling form of punishment was not just a simple act of execution, but a drawn-out spectacle of death and decay. The gibbet, a practice shrouded in a grim cloud, was intended as a deterrent to prevent crime. However, its effectiveness is questionable. Instead of instilling fear and promoting lawfulness, it often drew public curiosity as a morbid attraction. For those unfortunate enough to live in close proximity, it was a source of torment. The sight of a decaying body, the smell of death, and the eerie creaking of the metal cage became a part of their everyday existence. The origins of the gibbet are as unsettling as the practice itself. This frightful method of execution has been employed around the globe since antiquity, but it gained particular popularity in Europe and Great Britain starting in the mid-18th century. The term gibbet might make you think of a wooden scaffold used for hangings or impalements, but it refers to a much more specific and horrifying practice. Known also as hanging in chains, gibbeting involved placing the body of an executed criminal, sometimes still alive, into a metal cage shaped like a human. This cage, this gibbet, was then hung in a public area for all to see. Over time, the body inside the gibbet would decompose, leaving behind a skeletal reminder of the gruesome fate that befell the individual. This grotesque spectacle was intended to serve as a warning to potential wrongdoers, a visual representation of the consequences of crime. However, the gibbet was more than just a deterrent. It was a symbol of a society's harsh justice system, a visual embodiment of the price of crime. It was a spectacle that fascinated, repulsed and haunted the public in equal measure. The gibbet, a sinister and disturbing part of our history, left a lasting mark on society and on those who lived close to these morbid attractions. As we delve deeper into this chilling aspect of human history, we are reminded of the depths of cruelty that humanity can sink to in the name of justice and punishment. The grim reality of the gibbet was far from the intended deterrent effect. Instead, it became a source of eerie fascination and discomfort for the locals. The process of gibbeting was both gruesome and macabre. After the execution, typically by hanging, the criminal's body would be locked within a human-shaped cage, a chilling spectacle that would then be displayed in a public area. These grotesque displays were oddly popular, drawing in curious crowds who came to gawk at the decaying corpses. But for those who lived in close proximity to a gibbet, the novelty wore off rather quickly. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the bodies were left to rot until nothing but a skeleton remained. The smell that emanated from these gibbets was nearly unbearable, a sickening stench of decay that permeated the air. The eerie creaking and clanking of the cages, swaying in the wind, was a constant unnerving reminder of the grim spectacle. The bodies were impossible to get rid of. The authorities made sure of this by hanging the cages from 30-foot tall posts or studding them with thousands of nails to keep them upright. During these times it was widely believed that the key to stopping criminal activity was to make the punishment as grisly as possible. Authorities posited that these barbaric displays, like gibbets, would serve as a powerful deterrent. The sight of a decomposing body, exposed to the elements and picked clean by scavengers, was intended to instill fear into the hearts of potential wrongdoers. In England, crimes including robbery, piracy, smuggling and murder could all lead to a sentence of gibbeting. The gibbets themselves varied widely in design, as few blacksmiths were familiar with crafting human-shaped cages. Some were simply bell-shaped cages for the torso, while others were so intricately designed that there was even a notch for the nose. Despite the horrific nature of the gibbet, it was believed to be a necessary measure to curb criminal activity. But, as we'll soon discover, the legacy of the gibbet is far more complex and enduring than that. The gibbet, despite its gruesome nature, left a lasting legacy, even inspiring a macabre trend for souvenirs. Gibbets varied widely in design, from the simple bell-shaped cages to intricate constructions with a specific notch for the nose. Few blacksmiths were familiar with crafting such human-shaped cages, but those who were took their work seriously. The aim was to retain the human form as much as possible, even as the body decayed. Once the grim spectacle had served its purpose, the gibbet was removed. The components, however, didn't simply disappear. They became sought-after souvenirs, a chilling reminder of a brutal past. 
Some were even transformed into everyday items like tobacco bowls. In 1752, a parliamentary act further cemented the gibbet's place in history, though we'll save that tale for another time. The gibbet, a chilling symbol of a brutal past, serves as a stark reminder of the lengths societies have gone to in the name of justice.